The New South Wales Building Commissioner David Chandler has committed to restoring confidence in the construction sector and bringing key stakeholders along on the journey. David Chandler says this isn't about government always coming to the rescue. This is about the best in the business investing in a dramatic new way to plan and construct buildings and David is here with us now. David, in the age of COVID-19, how have your priorities had to change, if at all? Well, John, really it's just uh, sharpened the priorities and that is to uh, rebuild uh, confidence with consumers to come back into the market. Uh, before COVID, it was just simply them walking away due to a lack of confidence, but with COVID, it's more pressing now. We need, now need to get the consumers well back and they're gonna need a, immediate convincing that the game has changed. They're gonna to need to be ready, they're gonna to need to be informed. Tell us about the, the building reform and the legislation itself. What is that up to and, and what are the hopes for it? Well, we've had a very uh, significant period of engagement with all of the stakeholders. Uh, we've had consumers at the front of that. Uh, we've had industry associations that represent their interests. Uh, we've had professional associations. We've had a very, very wide uh, consultation and I've been to many projects to have a, have a look directly at what consumers are experiencing. So that's led us now to really waiting on the new legislation to be uh, passed through the parliament. Uh, the design and building practitioners bill is is terribly important piece because it really sets up the fact that New South Wales wants to lead in making sure that buildings are properly designed from the start and compliant and then subsequently the builders who make them can declare that those buildings have been made in accordance with those designs and remain compliant. There are two important bookends in this exercise. That'll be complemented by uh, some legislation that will give me some powers, significant powers, uh, in the area of uh, compliance and enforcement. Uh, it has been one of the big issues that, uh, that really the message needs to get through to developers who want to continue to do poor quality buildings is that there will be consequences. So those powers will be targeted specifically at those developers who feel that you can continue with business as usual. That is not going to happen. What are the Building Commissioner's priorities now? The most important thing that we're doing right here, right now, is to make sure that we've got all of the capability ready to go as soon as the legislation uh, is passed. The first thing is my Compliance and Enforcement Powers Bill we will be ready to go the day after that that legislation passes the parliament. Of course, the Design and Building Practitioners Bill will take about 12 to 18 months to fully become realised. So making sure that we've got the capabilities here and now, exercises like the e-planning platform that has been developed in DPI is a remarkable piece of work that is actually going to stitch together a whole bunch of silos that we're all trying to create single sources of truth to give us one platform that has all that source of truth in it. There's a number of other complementary pieces of technology that are also being advanced. They're well advanced and a number of them will be ready to go at the same time as my powers. But there'll be other stuff that we'll develop in the next year or so. But we will be ready to go uh, in, in respect of my powers and enforcement uh, uh, capabilities as soon as it's through the parliament. One of the things you've always been passionate about is this isn't necessarily government coming to the rescue. Stakeholders have to be at the table to help drive the change. Tell me about the stakeholder work you're keen to do. Absolutely, John. Well, one of the first areas that we've been pressing on, and I think we're now making good progress, is that we want professional associations to become professional. Um, the Professional Standards Council provides very good criteria for professional organisations to be quite clear about what their accreditation processes are, what their governance processes are, and what their accountability processes are. Quite often, that accountability piece has been left just simply to the regulator. Well, we think professional associations ought to be stepping up and having a much bigger hand in that play. So that's a terribly important issue. The other area is that in capability building. We've neglected capabilities for a long time in the construction industry, both at the vocational and at the higher education levels. But at the same time, while that neglect has occurred, um, the technologies and methods of construction and the ma materials that are available have evolved to a point that quite a lot of those pro education programs haven't got modern content in them. So one of the things that we'll be looking to do is to identify 
25 areas or more of content gaps that exist across all of the education platforms and see if we can accelerate units of knowledge to go back into the market such that we can quickly backfill those areas where the game has moved on. So what is the key thing you think is going to drive customer confidence in the industry again? Well, John, one of the areas that I've uh, really had a lot of experience at observing is that poor quality occupation certificates show that there's a root cause in a lack of adequate design and ad adequate construction quality control. Now, the importance of an occupation certificate in New South Wales is that consumers can't be compelled to move from being a depositor to an owner unless there is that occupation certificate. So one of the early powers that I will have is that in the most recalcitrant cases of developers not getting it, is that there will be some interruption to the issuance of occupation certificates because I am no longer going to tolerate poor quality buildings being used as a vehicle to force consumers to purchase or settle on new apartments. That is a big win for customers. That's a huge win, John, and, uh, and if anyone's in any doubt at all, um, those few, and I don't think there are very many, uh, those few who want to sort of thumb their nose at this uh, will, will be thinking again within a very few months. So David, if anyone, a customer or the industry is interested in the program of work so far, where can they get more information? Well, John, they can actually visit my website. There's an opportunity for them to leave comments or to suggest ideas. Um, I'm really interested in ideas that are about making a difference, not just simply opinions. So I do take an interest in that site. And in fact, I'm out in the field following up on a number of matters that have come to me through that process. Great. Thank you, David. We look forward to hearing from David again very soon.